if you want to work with me, I can't promise you long life. For instance, Jesus makes a statement, and I'd like us to take note of that statement. He says, in the book of John chapter 3, the Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. My emphasis is the response of Jesus. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily. Now, the, the Bible gave a boisterous introduction about this man called Nicodemus. He called him a man. Called him, he's a ruler. He's a Jew. He's a Pharisee. And he's Nicodemus. You see, the Bible, the Holy Spirit was fighting for space in the Bible. If the Holy Spirit could afford such a robust introduction <laughs> of this man, then there is a reason behind it. So there were five ways, five approaches you could take to analyze the man. But when Jesus was addressing the man, Jesus only had only one way to address him. Even though there are five open doors for of analysis, Jesus could only address him as a man because he became a man before he became Nicodemus, he became a man before he became a Pharisee, he became a man before he became a ruler. So, in the, the foundation of everything that he was, was that he was what a man, and then Jesus addressed him as a man and said, You were not born where. So, every other thing, hallelujah, every other thing that you have built. On this your manhood is suspect are you there you know when you were in your mother's womb and you were nine months old you had eyes but your eyes were not meant for the womb you had to be born into the natural world first before your senses became relevant so Jesus is saying that you had to be born into the realm of the spirit before your, your senses are there, they are factored, they are wired into your spirit man. But you see, you need to be born into the realm of life that is governed by the Holy Ghost before those spiritual senses of yours can become relevant. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? So now you can understand when the Bible says, it shall make him of ruach understanding. When the breath of God comes upon your spiritual senses, they are activated, they are mobilized. And a different realm of perception becomes possible. A different realm of education becomes possible. Faith glides on that perception. Faith glides on that revelation. Faith glides on that understanding. Faith glides on that logic that finds expression on the account of the Ruach activating your spiritual senses. You know, during the course of the little ministry we've done, um, my own process was, in my own opinion anyway, my process was too hard. Too hard. Too hard that at some point in the process, smiling was not part of my social experience. My wife has changed so many things in my life, and may the Lord bless her, Jesus. I, I was like John the Baptist. <laughs> when I look to the left, I see the way God deals with other people is so wonderful. My own experience is tough. It's like a cantonment. There's, there's a regiment. It was many years later that I understood by faith the reason why my own case was different. The day you gain the understanding that I'm talking about, you will stop desiring to be other people. 
you have not yet started getting understanding about your work with God and the preferences that God has chosen concerning your destiny, that is the reason why you prefer your neighbor. That's the reason why you would have wished that you were so, so and so brother, so, so and so sister. It's because you lack the understanding of faith. That, your process, does not make sense in any realm except the realm that is governed by the Holy Ghost. In fact, some of the challenges you go through, God is, they are not good experiences, but God allowed it. And it is in his good will that you should travel on those paths. It's not everything God takes away. Sometimes he gives you the capacity to go through things. And like I told you yesterday, if if somebody wants to mold with clay, they slap the clay, they stretch it, they slap it, they stretch it, they stretch it until the clay becomes tired. That's when you, you have the capacity to yield. So just in case you notice that your own, the dealings are intense, it means you are hard, you are hard in the flesh. So it will take an ancient hand of God to stretch you. Yeah, you are hard in the flesh. You are so rooted in the flesh that there is no breathing space for the Holy Ghost to, so there was slack. Stretch. When you become tired, it means that your strength, your wisdom is no longer in yourself. It means you don't have the capacity to pursue your ambition. So you, 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 you will learn through that process to wait. Okay, what do you have in mind? And if it doesn't answer for eight months, you are, you are not perturbed. If that's how you are going to escape further stretching, is, is your good way. We will we, we, tarry. We will wait. We will wait. It means you are becoming wise according to the dealings of the Holy Ghost. You are understanding the temple. And you are allowing yourself to fall within the framework of that government. What he is doing is that he is producing a peculiar treasure. And until you understand by faith, you might curse the day you were born. You might find yourself fighting against the protocol that has been put in place to manifest you in your best colors. Today, today we need to labor in prayer and ask that God will give us understanding. You, 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 you finished your service, all of you, five of you stood and snapped picture. You are the only one that is jobless now. The rest... <laughs> God will equip you with the understanding of why he allowed your own advancement to look like slow in the natural. There is something he wants to turn your eyes to see. And it's only through by faith that you will get to do what? To understand. Hey, my time is gone. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 as I round up because we have a long practical session this week. There are a few things I already understand by faith about this concerning this meeting tonight. Hebrews 11. Hebrews Hebrews 11 verse 17. Hebrews 11 verse Hebrews 11 verse 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 Are you there? Okay. By faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, verse 19 talks about the understanding that made his obedience possible. He was operating from another level of logic. Don't think that obedience is natural. There is a different level of logic that God makes available. And if you have that logic, your natural response will be to obey. But if you don't have that logic and you're looking from outside, it's a mystery. So I'm showing you the mechanical 
engine of faith. Huh? Now, give me that scripture quickly, quickly. Accounting. Mm. Let's not go into the Greek word of accounting. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. You see, when God came to encounter Abraham, there was a way he appeared unto Abraham. He appeared unto Abraham as the God that raises the dead and the God that called those things as be not as though they were. That was the introduction. That was how he revealed himself to Abraham. And on the strength of that revelation, he was armed with that revelation when God was asking him to offer his son. On the strength of that revelation, he knew, he concluded that the God that raised the dead, he has the ability to bring him back from the dead. Maybe he wants to do one magic. But his faith was anchored on the fact that the way God appeared to him was as the God that has the capacity to raise the dead and the God that caused the things that be not as though they were. Having that at the back of your mind, it was easy therefore for Abraham to interact with God, to obey God in the light of God's request on his life because there was a background knowledge, background knowledge that enhanced him. He was operating from another level of understanding and logic. One of the components of faith that you must understand is knowledge. The spiritual knowledge behind the, the practice of your conviction. The spiritual knowledge behind it. I was very sickly when I was small. Almost always sick until I had an encounter with Jesus. I can't tell you, the encounter was not in words. The encounter was more spiritual than it was academic. But what I got from the encounter was that I could see my sickness on Jesus. I don't know how that happened. And that was how I was not only healed, but I entered into healing ministry. As we begin to pray for the sick this night, I will see that thing again. And there is no sickness that is bigger than what I saw. There is always a spiritual knowledge, an encounter, a, an understanding uh, that makes the walk, our walk of faith fluid. A man that doesn't have that understanding is going to struggle. It comes so naturally to people that have had encounters. And that encounter has filled your heart. And there is no room for doubt because that reality is alive. We are going to pray tonight. And you pray for yourself. There is an understanding that you need that will enhance your walk with God. From 300 level, God began to show me that the part of, of ministry is calling me into is, is, is going to be dangerous. So whereas everybody can declare that um, I'm going to live for 70 years, I'll live for 120 years. I told my wife, I don't know how long I'll live. It might be short, it might be long because of the things I've seen. If you want to work with me, I can't promise you long life. Oh, you're laughing. I know it. So I'm prepared for that destiny. The fear of death, I left it behind long ago. If you are looking for a man to stand up in the face of danger, call me. I left it long ago. But I was not born like that. I was a very fearful man. There were encounters that I had. There were encounters that I had. Those encounters, it shaped my understanding. 
the Lord will shape somebody tonight in the name of Jesus. During COVID, the law in my state was that only 30 people are allowed in a room. It can be this size, but just 30. So we had 15 people in the room, some guys in the media room, so that we could do some broadcasts. Then the police came with um, handcuff to pick me. So I, I, I just followed them. And they were wondering, uh, you won't resist. No. Uh, you know. So the whole intimidation didn't sell again. I said, you were supposed to resist. Yes. No, let me. Uh, well, you, okay, you want me somewhere? Through faith, we understand. There's an understanding I have. That I know that laboring in the north, I am going to meet with persecution. Terrible ones. But I've been prepared for that encounter by an understanding. It's part of my calling. Can we pray tonight? Somebody needs to be shaped. We are not among those that will run because somebody is saying, okay, we'll kill you because we believe in Jesus. You'll be, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked by faith. We understand. Can we pray tonight, Lord, that understanding that I need. That understanding that I need to be able to deliver obedience in that hard request that you are making of me. Oh my God. Bring me into it so that obeying will become easy. Obedience will become easy when you have the kind of understanding that I'm talking about. Somebody needs to cry. We are in the last days. God wants to shape the people that will carry his cross. God wants to deepen his walk in the hearts of men. God wants to take you further than you have envisaged. But he's going to do it by bringing an understanding. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us on this channel. God bless you. Please kindly subscribe so that you get notified when we post another useful and impactful content. God bless you.